Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. You know, we all say that these are the kind of games that West Ham need to win, and we don't. It's not even hard for us to win at all. It's just so boring to watch us play these days. You know, start of the season, we were good. And it was really fun to watch. And I was excited to watch West Ham play. But these days, we're sussed out all the time. It's really boring just to watch us play. This Newcastle game was no exception. Newcastle was there for the taking. They didn't have Alanson Maximan. They didn't have Kieran Trippier. Who have arguably been two of their best players as of late. And we still could not do a job on them. It was like the Leicester game all over again, really. And now we've only won one in five, which is even more concerning. Seems like we're sliding down the table. So, as you can tell, I'm not happy with the result. It finished West Ham United 1, Newcastle United 1 at the London Stadium. A game which was against a Newcastle team that's rapidly improved. It's unbeaten under Eddie Howe since Christmas. It's got a lot of good players in it now thanks to its January transfer window. And there were key differences in the teams. One key difference was the fact that they... Signed, one signed players in January and has improved as a result and one team didn't and is paying a price for it. Because of that, West Ham has to play the exact same players week in, week out. We have the exact same system and like I say, we're getting caught out all the time. We got caught out by Newcastle. They knew what to do. And if Alisson Maximan had been playing in this game, he would have torched our fullbacks. And I mean that. But it's not, today wasn't good enough. But it was a very big difference in terms of the team's stitches, in terms of the teams going forward. Because Newcastle built up in, the, in January, whereas we didn't. Who played better? Newcastle did for a lot of parts of that game. Going with the starting lineups, um, two big bits of news for West Ham. So far, Lanzini were out injured. Fredericks and Ben Rama came in. I did not want Ryan Fredericks starting as right back. I knew it would have been a calamity. Ben Rama in, hmm, maybe. I don't know what Vlasic has to do to start a game, but I would probably start him as a false nine or even get him to play in the team at some point. But still, it was pretty much the same West Ham team. And we played, and the thing is with David Moyes and his arrogance is that we end up playing the same formation week in, week out. And everyone knows what to expect. We need to change it up big time. But we don't do that. And... I would have put fresh faces in for this Newcastle game, but we didn't really do that. We only do it reactively because we only do so when there's injuries in the team. And the only reason why Frederick started was because Sofal was out and Lanzini wasn't there either. Newcastle had early pressure in the game. Joe Linton and Willock came very close and those two had really good performances in midfield. Joe Linton's passing and work rate were fantastic. Never know why Newcastle signed him as a striker. Um, Willock again really well today for them he did do very well um, West Ham played too close and seemed really nervous to play it long everyone just played tight to each other Declan Rice was carrying the whole midfield because Suchek's done nothing and this has been the case for quite a lot of the season last season Rice and Suchek were co-dependent Midfield because one helped the other out. Rice would sit back and defend and Suchek would allow to go forward. The result of that was that Suchek got 10 goals and was named Hammer of the Year. Whereas this season, Declan Rice is the one who goes forward all the time. And if you're thinking that's okay because Suchek stays back, then you're wrong. Because Suchek's non-existent. He does nothing defensively. He does nothing offensively. He just sits around like a drip. Ben Rama had a good attacking half. I think he showed a lot of energy as well. And even though Newcastle did have some early chances off target, they were at least looking quite likely to score. So when West Ham took the lead, it came as a bit of a shock to me. Um, Cresswell with the ball whipped into the box. Lovely header by Craig Dawson. He's scoring back-to-back -back games now. Um, suppose the hate for him can stop for now because of that. But really good header, really good cross. Cresswell was doing very well as left back. He's back to, back to his... Um, Good assisting ways, as it seemed. Um, from that point onwards, I would have said that we weren't at our best, but still, we were leading. 
Newcastle still, really good midfield battle. Shelby, good at passing. Jolinton and Willock again, doing really well, even defensively. Dan Byrne, a solid, tall player who had a 100% tackle completion. So, Newcastle actually worked well off of each other. They had good units working together. West Ham's only good unit was its defence, which is worrying. The top four was doing okay at this point. The front four was doing okay, rather. But I still don't know why Mikel Antonio was still up there. He's never in the box when a ball comes in. He's never there. And he should be that kind of striker who's clinical like he was at the start of the season. He's not. He's the one crossing it in when there's no one there. And Suchek's usually in the box, but he does nothing anyway. Before half-time, Whistle went. Newcastle equalised. Uh, really poor header from Declan Rice. It awkwardly bounced back. Joe Willock... Got some contact onto it. It trickled over the line and it was 1-1. Willock hasn't scored all season, but he scored against us in the 3-2 win last season when we went to St. James's. And the season we just gifted him that goal. It was his first for Newcastle in around 20 games. Um, seemed like a bit of what, like what happened last season as I looked down at my notes. Half-time was 1-1. Different team talks required from different managers. Um, I would have wanted West Ham to communicate better between the goalkeeper and the defence because it seemed quite awkward between them. They didn't really know how to deal with the ball properly. I would have liked the midfield to work together a bit better. I would have told Suchek to get his arse into gear big time. Um, I would have taken off Ryan Fredericks because he did nothing and he was on a yellow card. And lo and behold, my wish came true. Fredericks came off and finally, finally Ben Johnson came on for the first time in goodness knows how long. And that happened at half-time. It was a good substitution by Moyes, and I can't slag him for that, but he still showed a lot of arrogance by not really changing the style of play-up. Bright start to the half from West Ham in the second half. A lot of activity going on. Dawson looked very bright. Zuma looked very solid. Um, but going forward, we did have the numbers, but nothing there. Antonio, again, not in the box. Why is Antonio's... The striker, when he's the one whipping it in the box all the time to next to nobody, huh? Nobody is there to help the dude out. And that's why he's not been scoring a lot recently. It's one of the reasons. He even had to do a lot of defensive work, Antonio, which is another thing. Newcastle just made use of vacant space. Jolinton ran in a lot into that space. And as a central midfielder, as a playmaking kind of midfielder, he's doing really well right now. And I will tell you that from what I watched in this game. West Ham made a substitution. It was a bit disagreeable, but a fresh face was needed. Player coming on, Nikola Vlasic. Off came Sai Ben Rama, who seemed to have a go at David Moyes as he was coming off. Ben Rama has been subbed 18 times this season. I think it was a little bit harsh on Ben Rama. I wouldn't take him off. I would have taken off four nails and actually put Vlasic on. And have Vlasic as a false nine. Because he's got the energy to help us out. Um, I still think if Vlasic was to start a game, it would be better than starting Antonio. We definitely have a change up there. Uh, Shelby again was doing everything that Suchek should be doing for us. Vlasic had the energy, like I say. And still that second half, I think I think it was more about containment rather than wanting to get the win from West. That's all we do now. We just seem to want to play out for the point and do the bare minimum rather than actually going for the win. It's boring and tedious to watch. And it's the same thing week in, week out. I've told, I said a long time ago on my channel, and I've broken record a lot on this channel. But I will say it because I have to. We are getting sussed out and we have no plan B. And who does that come down to? The manager and his arrogance. And it showed again. David Moyes has done good things. But just because we're in Europa League and what have you, it doesn't mean that Moyes is immune from criticism. He has been forced to bear the brunt of it in the last few months because of his lack of activity in January, saying that he was okay with what he had. And then he shakes his head on the bench like, oh, what could I have done? You could have signed players, David. That's what you could have done. Um... He's favouritist, I think, as well. He starts Suchek and lets him play the whole 90. And Antonio plays the whole 90 and did nothing. Ben Rama contributed more than those two guys. 
yet Antonio played the full game. Make it make sense, David. Seriously, man. Seriously, make it make sense, man. It's just arrogance from the manager. It is pure arrogance. I don't blame the players. I blame the manager. Because he's the one who's allowed them to get run to the ground. He's the one who's not shown any real tactical uh, aptitude as such. So what do we do next? I don't know. Game we had to win and re against Newcastle side. That was there for the taking and we didn't do it. And things like this will cost us come May. Top four will slip away from us. European football may even slip away from us. And it's worrying. And I've got every right to fret about it. We've got to play Wolves next. And I can see them destroying us. Because of how good they are. And how much good form they've got. I want to... I'd change the full team, actually. For that Wolves game, you know, freshen things up. Maybe, you know, start Vlasic. Maybe start Alex Kral. Maybe give a youngster a chance at some point. I don't know. Do something. I'd actually even drop Antonio out, put Bowen up there and Vlasic to replace Bowen's vacant slot. I would. What have you got to lose in that? Nothing. Finish 1-1 in this game. Um... I can't respect the point, really. I'm happy we got the point. I'm glad we didn't lose, but it just seemed like we just wanted to play for the point. We show no real intent and no real desire. We don't show any intent these days to want to win. I don't care about our league position or the fact we're on 40-plus points. It's not about that. It's about we don't show enough. And it's a massive drag. I'm worried now for until the end of the season. I don't know what to expect. But it's got second half of the 2014-15 season written all over it again. And it's going to come and haunt us big time. Thank you very much for watching this Aftermath video. If you liked the video, hit that like button and don't forget to sub for more content. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all soon.